We started tagging goldfish in 2017. Near Hamilton, Ontario, aquatic research biologist Christine Boston and her team Yay. are on a mission. Oh, get the guy. A mission to rid the waters of an unwanted and unwelcomed predator, goldfish. My, what? <laughs> and not the tiny orange colored variety in aquariums. What are they doing in the harbor? These are meant to be in a fish bowl. Uh, these fish are getting into the harbor, uh, <laughs> either through um, active release, people are releasing their pets into the harbor, or they're getting into the harbor, I think, through um, people's private ponds or stormwater management ponds. So why are they so big? I don't remember goldfish uh, being that big. Uh, I think they just, they have the resources. They have an unlimited supply of food here in the harbor for them. That's good for the goldfish, which are not only surviving, but thriving. It's doing well and our native fish aren't doing well. Uh, it competes uh, for the habitat that our fish need um, to spawn and reproduce. It, they generate a lot of um, turbidity in the water, which uh, decreases the water quality. Can you grab the forceps and pull that out for me? Christine and her team want to learn more about goldfish. Got it. Yep. So they're using something called acoustic telemetry that will help track and monitor their movement. So this tag is a transmitter. It should last three to five years. It's going to emit a, a sound, like a, a pulse, every three to five minutes. Um, it has a depth sensor on it, so we can tell what depth the fish is at um, at any time when this fish is swimming in the vicinity of one of our uh, receivers. The team works swiftly, trying to minimize the stress on the fish. Goldfish are considered destructive and not much is known about them. There we go. The team is hopeful their work will shed some light on their behavior. Now scientists at the University of Nevada are finding them by the hundreds in Lake Tahoe and they are monsters, guys. Okay, maybe they're Around the globe, the goldfish are invading lakes and ponds. All right, who did it? Who released their goldfish? Anglers even capturing monster-sized fish. Huge goldfish. Some lakes even shutting down fishing because of goldfish infestations. So this is Coots Paradise. So this is the harbors just on the other side of the uh, the fishway over here, which you'll see. So Coots Paradise. Ecologist Kyle Mataya has also noticed a spike in the goldfish population. Pull them right up to the so they can get out of the step as tight as we can get to the front. Kyle and his team work to keep the common carp out of this nature reserve. The carp is an invasive fish and destroys habitat and precious spawning grounds. So with the help of this multi-million dollar fish barrier, the carp are diverted and that's helped decrease their population by more than half. But at the same time, Kyle says there's been an explosion of goldfish. What do you figure is the cause for this spike in goldfish? It's tough to say exactly. Um, I know even ourselves, we're, we're kind of puzzled as to why, you know, the goldfish are are coming up in such high numbers as they are. The goldfish may be filling that niche where the carp have been removed from. Lovable pet or undesirable pest, whatever the reasons for the goldfish boom, scientists have one singular message. Don't flush your pet goldfish down the toilet and don't discard them in lakes and ponds. They're competing with our native species, and right now there's an imbalance in the system. Yeah. We don't have enough of these native fishes that, that we need to have to have in a healthy ecosystem. But for the good of science, these tagged goldfish are allowed to return to the waters, providing valuable data that could one day help restore these wetlands. Cass Rusi, CBC News, Hamilton.